Hate the Cow Dog, Book 1, by John R. Erickson, Chapter 11, The Attack on the Ranch. Along about dark, the Coyote Village came to life. Everybody was excited. Fresh chicken, fresh cat, oh boy, they shouted. Oh boy. Even the kids were excited. They chased each other around, practiced at howling, played a game called Get the Dog. The idea of the game was that the two kids played coyotes, and one played the guard dog. The coyotes lured the dog out into a fight and then jumped him. I had played that game myself, only when I played at it, it hadn't been a game. Then I had been the dog on the dog side. I never thought it was much fun either. After the sun went down, Scrunch climbed up into a pile of rocks and gave a speech to the whole village. He was a firebrand and a rubber rouser, and he preached the kind of hot gospel them coyotes wanted to hear. Jack Rabbit run too fast, make coyote tired to catch, mouse run down and hole, coyote has to dig, make tired too, but chicken, chicken easy, chicken nice and fat, sit on nest, not fight. Chicken plump and juicy. This night, everybody eat chicken. KFC. Chicken sandwich. Popeyes. Um, we'll make the line go around the building. Oh, boy. A cheer went up from the crowd, and I was standing beside Missy. She whooped and hollered along with the rest of them. Squatch waited for the cheering to die down, and he glanced over at me. Ranch not have big guard dog now. Only have little white dog with cut off tail. Maybe this night we kill dog, too. Another chill, cheer went up, and Scrunch watched over me, watched me with a half smile on my face. When I didn't cheer the rest with the rest of them, he said, "What you say, huh? Maybe you help kill a little white dog, huh?" Maybe so, Scrunch. Maybe so. Then they they, they led the crowd singing, "Me Just a Worthless Coyote," which everybody's was everybody's favorite song, the sort of coyote national anthem. I noticed it brought tears to old. Cheap Guts' eyes guess it brought back memories of his younger days. When the song started, Rip and Snort came over the way I was and wanted to harmonize just the way we did the night we went carousing. I tried, but I didn't feel much like singing. Rip and Snort bellered and hollered and howled, and them was a singing themselves a big time. They were all excited about the raid and got into an argument over which one was going to get Drove with the worst whipping. Listening to them snarl at each other, I got a funny feeling about the good old boys. They have a, a way of changing into mean old boys pretty quick. The singing stopped, and it was time to start the raid. Scrunch led the whole village in a howl. Then those of us who were going to go on the raid lined up in single foul. Missy came over to tell me goodbye. Hung have a good fight. Bring back fat chicken. Prove to everybody he good coyote. Oh boy. Uh, I had a, oh boy, but thanks, Missy. I'll do my best. Then we marry. Have seven, eight little pup. Seven or eight? She gave a yip and a howl. Maybe nine, ten, oh boy. She nuzzled me under the chin and stepped back and gave me a smile. Gee, she had a pretty face, but you know what? When she smiled, I saw a mother's face, and it reminded me of that aged mutton. Dirt near ruined the occasion for me. Scrunch came down the line, checking things out, and gave orders to the man. When he came to me, he gave me a hard look. Better not make mistakes, Scrunch. Watch close. You do that, Scrunch. You might learn something. Gave me a sneer and went back to the front. With the rest of the village cheering, we marched down to the canyon, rim and trot. Once we left the village, Scrunch passed the order for silence. Down in the valley, we got a, on a cow trail and followed it south towards the creek. Couldn't help but wondering where Drover was and what he was doing right now. Had he heard the singing? Did he run to the machine shed? Or was he out on patrol? I hope for his sake... He was in the backest corner of the shed, because these coyotes were dangerous in a dangerous mood. As we slipped along through the night, I started putting a few things together. It was pretty clear by this time 
The scrunch was the one who had been responsible for the chicken murders. He had been slipping down there all by himself, killing one or two a night. And now he decided to launch a full-scale invasion and share the spoils of war with the rest of the coyotes. Funny, I'd solved the case, only now I was working for the other side. Life sure does play tricks on a guy. Makes it awful hard to plan for the future. Growing up, I never would have dreamed that I'd end up a chicken killer. I was kind of glad Ma wasn't around to see it. About 200 yards north of the ranch, Scrunch called a halt and gave the final orders for the attack. He told Rip and Snort to circle around and come in from the south and sent another couple guys over to the west. He hadn't given me any orders, and that was good. I figured I could stay low, stay out the way, and show up when all the dust cleared. You, I looked around. You go with Scrunch. We get a little white dog. Find out how bad you want, sister. Well, uh, surely I don't deserve such an honor. Not talk, only fight. Those was left, and me and Scrunch started sneaking around the ranch. I felt sick. Things had gotten out of control. I hadn't wanted it to happen this way. Me and my old buddy Drover, uh, me against my old brother, buddy Drover, in his own bungling way, Drover was a nice dog. We had our squabbles and differences, but we'd had some good times, too. About 25 yards out, Scrunch stopped and dropped down in the grass, and I squinted into the darkness and saw Drover standing behind the northeast corner of the machine shed. Just as you might expect, he wasn't looking in our direction. Little Runt had no idea we were fixing to break loose. A laugh growled in Scrunch's throat. This easy dog, stupid. I couldn't argue with him. Facts is facts. We crawled up for another 10, 15 yards, then off to the south. Ripping Snort raised a howl, drove a, jumped up in the air, and faced the south. I could see that he was shivering. And the boys off to the west raised a howl and drove a, faced that direction. Scrunch growled and drove a, faced us. His head was cocked sideways and one ear up. That meant he still didn't see us. But he was beginning to get the picture. The ranch was surrounded. I kept waiting for him to run, but he didn't. Scrunch pushed himself up out of the grass. You go first, I watch. Who, me? Well, uh, seems to me that, uh, the head went up on the back of his neck. There was a murder in those yellow eyes. You go first, I cut throat right now. Right here. I could tell he wasn't kidding. I just thought there's no need to. I see what you mean. Yes, I'll go first. I stood up. Scrunch threw back his head and let loose the bloodiest howl I ever heard. Sent shivers all the way down to the end of my tail is how frightful it was. He gave me a shove and the attack was on. Drove a herd us coming. He started yipping and jumping up and down, but he stood his ground. I could hear myself talking. Run, Drover, while there's still time. My voice got louder. You got no chance, Drover. Don't try to be a hero. Next thing I knew, I was yelling, Drover, run for the shed. You outnumbered. They'll kill you. Run for your life. The little mutt was so scared, he was spinning in circles and jumping up and down at the same time, but he still didn't leave a post. By the time I could see Rip and Snort sneak, sneaking up behind him, moonlight was glinting off the teeth and eyes. They didn't look like no good old boys anymore. They had murder on the minds. Beside me, Scrunch was screaming, kill, kill. All at once, something snapped inside my head. I felt wild and crazy. I headed straight for Drover. I'll never forget the look in his eyes. He was more than scared. He was bewildered. Didn't know what was happening to him. I turned to face my charge. As I flew past him, I took aim at Snort. I yelled, this is it, son. Uh, this is it, son. Blank against Texas. Fight for your life. I caught Snort by surprise and sent him rolling down the hill. That gave me just enough time to catch Rip as he was making a dive for the back of Drover's neck. 
hit him midair and knocked him on his back. By this time, Scrunch had plowed Drover under and was standing on top of him. Uh, standing on top of him, ready to tear out his throat. I lit right in the middle of his pack, got a bite on his right ear, and started chewing. That took his mind off Drover. He jumped straight up and pitched me off. I got to my feet, and he got to his feet, and we faced each other. Call off your boy, Scrunch. Let's make it me and you, one-on-one. He grinned. Chicken dog, die for this. I had a little piece of his ear in my mouth, and I spit it out at his feet. Out the corner of my eye, I saw a light come on in the house. But that was my only hope. If High Loper didn't hurry and get his pants on and grab his gun, I was a dead dog. See, seems you lost a piece of one ear, Scrunch. If you'll come a little closer, I'll work on that other one so they'll match. Scrunch cut his eyes toward Rip and Snort. Get him. Rip and Snort gave me a kind of mournful look. It was decision time. They had to choose between an old drinking buddy and their own flesh and blood. I said, get him. They licked their lips and swallowed and glanced at each other, and they chose flesh and blood. They started creeping toward me. Drover, I said in a low voice, keep him off my back, son. Are we finished. Drover squeaked. He was too scared to talk. Lip and snort, and the other two coyotes started closing in on me. Hunk, stupid dog, said Squire. Stupid dog pay with life. You could be right, Squire, but you got to do what you got to do. But you got it to do. You could be right, Scrunch, but you got it to do. All right, um, interesting. We was finally, no, we was totally surrounded with every man for himself. I figured I might as well leave this old life with another piece of Scrunch's ear. So I made a dive at him. We collided and went up on our hind legs. I boxed him across the nose. He boxed me right back. Made my eyes water. I clawed his lip, and he clawed mine. I went for his ear, and he went for mine. We chewed and snapped and snarled and growled. Think old Squanch was a little surprised that a cow dog could give him such a tussle. I was holding my own until they jumped, jumped me from behind two or three of them. Didn't get a good count, but it was pretty enough, plenty, plenty enough to finish me off. They wrestled me down and throwed me on my back and pinned me on the ground. Squanch walked up, straddled me, showing his big, sharp teeth. Now you die. He went for my, he went for my throat, and I heard St. Peter blow his horn. All done. All done. All done.